Father Almighty and everlasting God, we commit the administration into your holy hand. As we are going into this administration now, Father, be with us, guide us, and protect us. Let our mind, our soul, and our spirit, everything within us, yield to your word alone, and not to the word of any man, and not to the tradition of man, but to your guidelines and to your rules. Father, grant us the grace to be an obedient children that we follow your guidelines and your precepts. We want to be holy because you said you are holy. For anyone that are going to be, that is according to your word in the book of Leviticus chapter 11, that you are holy and anyone that are going to come to you must be holy. Father Lord, grant us the grace to be holy before thee, O Lord. Sanctify us, O Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the blood of Jesus sanctify our soul, spirit, and body. Let us become holy before thee today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In this ministration, it shall profit us, it shall profit me, it shall profit everyone that is listening, and it shall profit God Almighty in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today's title is going to be Time. Time and Season. We're going to look at time in a different in a different dimension. Time has been used, you know, to preach in many ways and in, in many synagogues. But time preaching has no limit. Time is what God used to control the world. Praise the Lord. He used God, God is the owner of time. He created time. Praise the Lord. According to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we're going to read more about that. But before then, let us understand what time is. There is, there is appointed period. Time is an appointed period. That, that is, it comes and it goes. It comes and it goes. It comes and it goes like a, like a, like a hobbit. A rotating orbit. There was a time that even today we woke up. Many people woke up four o'clock. Four o'clock moved to five o'clock. Five o'clock moved to six. Six to seven. Up to present time, and it is continuous, and it does not wait for anyone. You cannot go back to nine o'clock, or you cannot go back to four o'clock and say that oh let me complete my sleep. Oh or let me complete my this. It, it is impossible for you to go back into past time. You can only go into the future time. God alone created time for himself. And he uses time to control the affairs of mankind. He uses time to control everything inside it. Praise the Lord. But he himself he is not inside that time alone. Many people think that God is inside the time that he created. But he did not stay inside that time. He, he uses that time to, to achieve all his creation. Praise the Lord. He uses time to bring together, to harmonize. He uses time to harmonize everything that he created. We are ruled by time, but he is not inside that time. And for everything God created, he placed time on top of them. Hello, shall I, shall I say that again? For everything that God created, because we are inside time, but God is outside the time, only looking and overlooking the time that he created. He used, many people, in a spiritual in a spiritual world, you will see that the whole world or the whole universe are being held. Some people will say, "Oh, it is a quantum theory that the gravity um, holding the planet, the, the, the there's a, a magnetic cord that is holding the planet. That is the physical. But what is holding the the whole universe is time." There is time for everything. Even, let, me, let us look at it now. Ordinary trees 
has got a time limit. Ordinary leaves has got a time limit. The time that God created, he is not inside it, but he uses it to control what is inside it. That is what he created. Praise the Lord. God alone owns the time. He created time, but not inside it. Mankind are put inside that time. Are you getting? God uses time to control everything he created according to the book of Ecclesiastes from chapter three, from verse one. We will read now. A time for every purpose. Is that to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. I said that many of our pastors or our Jews, we've used time to preach in, in many areas. But today, we're going to look at some areas that God has given us time for. Some areas that God has given mankind time for. Praise the Lord. So we're going to, we're going to correlate and match together the time and repentance. There is a time for repentance. Praise the Lord. But what are you using your time for? Actually matters for you to be relevant before him. We are all his work hands. But he uses time to monitor, control, and to make sure that we come to one thing, to repentance, that we may be holy and acceptable before him. Praise the Lord. What are we, what are we trying to justify here? If, if somebody read the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 2, Verse 10, it says, for we are his workmanship. The book of Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 said, we are his what? We are his workmanship that he placed inside time. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. But we, we deviated from doing good works. Many people are doing bad works because of what the world is throwing at us which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 says, for we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, the good works that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That is, what should we, what, what what are the good works that we are to work in them? We're going to analyze that later. But time, let us, let us read the Esclesis chapter three from verse one. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. There is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted a time to kill and a time to heal, time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate and a time of war and a time of peace. In everything, this, what Solomon was trying to give us here was he looked at himself. He looked at time. He justified his lifetime and the owner of time request. He realizes that and he observed that for everything that he does or mankind had to do, we are governed by time. But the utmost thing is for us to come to the repentance of, of of 
our evil doings, that is to come in line with God, because there will be a time that the owner of time will ask of that time from us. Praise the Lord. What did I say? There will be a time, the time of judgment, that the owner of time will ask from us what we have used our time to do. That is why um, I, I pity some people that when they do evil and then nothing happened to them, though they believe that they have all the time in the world to continue doing what they are doing. Praise the Lord. I want people to open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 before we go into everything. I'm relating time with repentance. Just to, just to give some people that believe that, oh, what they are doing, the evil that they are doing, because God did not chastise them now, it means that they have the audacity or they can continue. Praise the Lord that they can continue. Is there anyone there? Yeah. Oh yeah, Peter please. Three. Yes. Chapter three. Yes. Verse. Verse eight. Verse eight and nine. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes, read, read. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord a day, with the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. The Lord is not what? Slow in keeping his promise. In keeping what? His promise. His promise. Mm -hmm. as, some as some understand slowly. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone, come, everyone to come to repentance. Everyone to come to what? Repentance. Everyone to come to what? Repentance. Okay, let me read another um version of the bible so maybe we might understand it more better he said but do not overlook this one fact praise the lord but do not overlook this one fact beloved that with the lord one day is a thousand years that is when when you are doing things within the time that you have on the surface of the planet, you are not conscious about the things of, that you are doing on the surface of the planet. To God, like one day is, I mean, uh, I mean, a thousand years is like one day to God. Are you getting me now? The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises. That is what are the promises to make your life to be better or for judgment. He is not slow to that. But what is it trying to? What is it trying to achieve? What is it trying to do? To keep the good promises for you and I, as some count it to be slowness, our God is not slow to react. To react, but is patient towards you and I, not wishing that any should perish. God, so this. Do you, do you understand that area? Not wishing that any should perish. Many people are asking me that, oh, why is, why, why God did, did not kill Satan? Why God did not just kill Satan? That it would have been very easy for him to, to, kill, to kill him. And then the problem of the world will be solved. I said, no, it will not. It is too late for that anyway, because there is no need for killing Satan now, because what he had done from the, from the beginning in the book of Genesis is still rolling. It's in our system, it's still rolling on. So God is sifting, God is sifting the good ones now from the bad ones, those that want to follow that because of one thing he did at that time, when that thing happened, out of hunger, out of what, out of anger, he, he gave us choice. He said, okay, from now henceforth, anything you want to do, you are free to do it. I give you, I give you the free will. I give you the choice. 
you have the power of choice to choose well. But there is one thing that no matter what you are going to choose, if it does not correlate with my guidelines, there is a consequence. That is all. That is the whole excess of this world. But that was not the way he designed it. That was not the way he designed it. But because of what he did in the beginning, after he was of after he was grieved, that is why it's very dangerous for, for family to grieve God. Many families are going through tri tribulation of what their forefathers have done in the past that grieve God and God pronounced judgment. And he said, I am a jealous God. I, I, I visit the iniquities of the forefathers from the children, children to the fourth generation. And I have mercy for those that loves me. Hello, are we getting it there? Are we getting it there now? He said, not wishing that any of us should perish. God will, God will not destroy what he creates. He is not in the habit of destroying what provided they are in line with what he with what he puts down. Then we are going to, it's going to lead us to a, um, a, an area whereby we will see just there's so many instances, but we're just going to use this as you know an example to to um, to portray what we are preaching today about time, and that God is giving us the time only for us to change ourselves, to change our life, to let our life come in agreement with His principle and precept. He said, not wishing that any should perish. He does not want you to perish. He does not want me to pray, perish. So whatever wrong things that we are doing, this is what he wants for us. But that all should reach repentance. He's giving us time for us to reach repentance. How long does it take you to reach repentance? In between that time, for us to reach repentance, know, knowing fully well that everything he created, as I said earlier on, has got a limited, or are limited by time. There is a time to be born and there is a time to die. There is time in everything that we do. God uses that to judge us. But that we are continuously swimming in sin what are the sins that god if we read about the 10 commandment because before then there was no law but when there is law then sins sins are or judgment are going to be conducted for the atrocity of what they were doing then god said i will give my people guidelines that is what happened in the book of Exodus when we studied the book of Exodus and we completed it, all of us that we are, I mean, everyone that are with us, we learn a lot in the book of um, 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 Exodus and we saw the transformation. That is where God now decided to choose a nation for himself. And when he chose a nation, he now placed his constitution and his, his, his law and guidelines. And among the guidelines we are reading now, which we are studying now in the book of Leviticus, the guidelines of, of um, reformation, changing the orientation of what is acceptable, things that makes us to be clean, things that makes us to be unclean, things that makes us to be sanctified and justified before him. If we want to serve him, we have to be part of this holy nation that he created for himself. He said, I want to create a nation for myself. And you and I, we are striving to be part of that nation. We, want, we don't want to follow the constitution, but we want to be part of that nation. It is not going to work. Hello? It, it, I kept on saying this. It can work if you are trying to be part of that nation, but you don't want to abide with the rules and regulation of that nation, then you are not a citizen. 
Even in this Great Britain, if someone is given their British passport, but every time contravening their rules and regulation, at some point, they will deport that person back to where it come from. But if you stay and you abide with their rules and constitution, their regulation, oh, you are free to live as long. In fact, your generation to generation, many people in this country, they are foreigners anyway, up to the coin. All of us, we are foreigners in this country. But who are staying, who are holding the country together are those that are willing to abide with the rules and regulations of the country. Do you want to be part of this holy nation of God? You need to start learning. You need to start understanding the president, the, the, the king, the, 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 the ogre at the top. You need to start understanding him very well. Otherwise, there will be conflict. You can't go to a company now and be striving with your boss. He kicks you out. That is just the simple way I can, I can, I can, I can say. You are employed in a place and you don't want to abide with the rules and regulation of that company. That means you, the ethos are not incompatible with you. Then they will let the person go easily. And the company, the company continues. Likewise, the kingdom of God continues. Whether you decide to follow God, whether you decide to abide with him or not, God is giving you that time. But among that time, you have a stipulated time limit as well. So why are we not begging God to give us the opportunity to redeem our time such that we can repent so quickly that we can enjoy this kingdom of God that God has created for us? Because there are so many benefits. There are so many benefits in the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ came to give us that opportunity. He came to give us that simplicity of making the guidelines to work for us. Example, in those days, when you commit sins, you have to, you have to atone for yourself before you say that you want to now pray to God or you want to come before God. You have to atone. What did they use to atone in those days? They used blood and the blood of goat, the blood of, uh, of ram. And all those materials, they are not, they don't come cheap. So the poor are now given even opportunity to buy a dove. A small dove, the, the 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 blood of a dove, they will use it to atone for that person. Are you getting neither? Even that, some people could not afford that. Some people, they are unable to afford that. But look at it, for you and I, Jesus Christ had to come. The timeline of what when God placed the, the rules or those rules for them for atonement to the timeline of Jesus Christ was about 1,500 years. So it was not just within, a, within 100 years, within 200 years, within 300 years. No, God has time. He, he, he created time and he put us in it. If you want to visualize this world, if you want to understand this world very well, if you see it that we are all inside time, but God is outside it, it will make sense to you. But And in that time, we have a limited time as well. Everything that he created, even the sand, hello, even the sand, has got limited time. You will think that, oh, the, the, grass, the, the grass or the land will remain the same. Oh, no, they don't remain the same. I studied it. When I looked back, I went into the archive. I researched into the archive of the area. You, you research the, the archive of the area you live in about, let me see, don't let me go, 100 years ago. You go into the archive and check the area you are now, 
100 years ago you will realize you will realize that it was it was you wouldn't even notice or you wouldn't even know that could it be true could it be this when i look at this camberwell area in those days oh my word i said really it doesn't look at it that but, and that is the way it's going to be in the in another hundred years to come all this what you are seeing now will have gone that is time for everything there is time for everything brethren everything that you are saying now will have gone but your deed your deed people will be saying it even god in heaven will be vouching for you will be saying that oh the time that this person used he used it successfully and just right we i was speaking to my brother um this week we were talking about Aja, uh, bishop ajayi crowder was born in the year 18 18 18 plus and he, he was he was captured as a as a slave that is i don't know whether you know bishop ajayi crowder he he happens to be the one that translated the bible to yoruba he was a slave he was captured and the pers the person that bought him in the slavery sent him to school and he used that time look at it now someone in slavery using the time inside that slavery to make impact in our years in our time now he was one of they just realized about they just realized not long ago that he was one of the key people that actually brought christianity to Nigeria that make Jesus Christ to be well known among the people of Nigeria such that we have Christian also in Nigeria because why the Bible, the education of the Bible and how to read the Bible was not known to many people. How many people were learned in those days, but the translation of the Bible in English to indigenous language made many people to come to the limelight of God. Look at that. Just look at that. You, you look at it. Think it twice. A slave. When the slave, the slavery was abolished, then he moved, he moved, he was among the one that was repatriated to Nigeria. And because he used his time judiciously, when he was with then that period where you are not you are there's no more slavery you are using your time what are you using your time to do now are you using your time to glorify god you want to be successful in life start using your time judiciously start using your time but start from using that time to that you've got to repentance hello just as the book of 2 Peter is telling us here, 2 Peter chapter 3 from, from, from verse 8, say, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day, the Lord is not slow to fulfill the promise as some, as some count slowness. Look at 18,000 years, I mean, in the year 18,000, someone in slavery the impact of that person since that time even it was not known but after his death what he did now being recognized hello now being recognized that is tr the translation of the english bible into yoruba bible such that all our grandmother and our grandfather also can partake in the in the dispensation in the in the good in the good promise that God has given to the world. I am very, some people are not proud of him, but I am proud of him. And his son also followed it about Macaulay. His son also followed his footsteps. Also what? Pushing the good works of God. Pushing what? Pushing forward the good works. What are you pushing in the kingdom of God? What are you evangelizing? 
what is your life showing? What is your, what is your life preaching? Are you lazy just sitting at home? Looking for green pasture, but does not want to do anything. No, God is not, God does not condone such people. There is time for everything. There is what? There is time for everything. It is not the time to just stay folding hands. God does not want that. God wants you to use your time that you've got to make an impact in the life of people. How do you make impact in the life of people? First of all, start by repentance. Check what you are doing. Come off all the waywardness. Come off all the, all the things that you have been introduced to. All the things that does not make sense. Remember that the owner of time, one day we ask, one day the owner of time will come and ask, what have you used? with my time. Hello. Hi. In the book of Psalm 104, told us that chapter nine, I mean, verse, uh, one, chapter 104, verse 19, said, he made the moon, God made the moon to mark the seasons. God, he created, the, you see all the ordinances there, the sun and the moon. He made, God made them to mark the season, the sun to know its time for setting. He knows its time for setting. Do you know your time for repentance? You have been doing it and you have been going scot-free. You have been doing it, nothing has happened to you. It does not mean your, your conscience is telling you that what you are doing is wrong. But because that you are still getting help from one way or the other, you are still being, you are still, you're thinking that, oh, God has hand in it. When the Holy Spirit is conv convicting you inside that what you are doing is wrong, repent. Come into the promise of God. God is not slow to anger. As many people think that he said slow to anger. No, he's giving us time such that we might repent and come into the good works that he had created. Okay, what are the things that could make some people to go, what, what happens when people are not working within time? We read in the book of, let us, let us all read this one, um, the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, the book of 1 Samuel. Let us, because I said, I'm going to, I'm going to make an illustration. The book of 1 Samuel, what happened there in the book of 1 Samuel? This 1 Samuel chapter 7. This is the ark of God, not in the hand of the children of Israel. And we all knew about how important the ark of God is. I won't say was, even up to now. Anyone that is in the possession of the ark of God, they are winners. You can't, you, you cannot. You cannot, um, you cannot dispute that because even the arch enemy of Israel, of the Israelites, are fighting for the ark of God to be on their side. Oh, you don't know. The holies of holy currently, where the ark of God resided, it is not in the hand of the Israelites. That is, it is not in the hand of, though in Israel, but it's not in the hand or in control of the children of God. Why? Because the Muslims value it. They took over the holies of holy and they are the one controlling it up till tomorrow. I don't know whether tomorrow God will grant them the, the grace to take over it, but up to today, it is still in the hand of the Muslims, such that when you and I travel to Israel, that we want to go and pray in that synagogue that has been destroyed. And also we are, the, the, the compound of it, the fence around it, we are not allowed to go inside of it, but we can only pray outside of it. That is why you will see them praying at West Bank. And you know, you know the, the, they will say wailing war. 
It is not the world that they are praying to. If you go there, don't have the mindset that you are praying to the world. Rather, have the mindset that you are praying towards the act of God, where God says that whenever the act of God, there is a mercy seat. I told, we preach about the importance of the act of God. Everyone are saying the act of God, the act of God. And many people or many pastors are preaching about what is inside of them. It is not what is inside of it. What is inside of it, he created them, he gave it to them. That is not what make the act of God to be a potent, a potent weapon and a potent blessings to whoever is in possession of it. What makes it to be a potent instrument of God is that there is a mercy seat instructed direct, it's a, it was a directive construction for Moses to place a mercy seat of gold on top of that ark and God said that that is where I will sit among you when you are traveling. Hello. But that is when in the in the wilderness, you know, in the wilderness, the building in the, 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 that was built in, in the book of Exodus, you know, and that is, you know, the book of Exodus is when they are in the wilderness and journeying towards the promised land. And God said that when you are now going, that is where I will sit with you and then I will journey with you. And since that day, God has not stopped making that mercy seat to be as vital as anything, such that the enemy recognizes it, that it is that act of covenant that is making them to win as little nation as they are. It is not by numbers that God makes you to win. Don't look at them. When God is on your side, you are a conqueror. Hello. There might be thousands, there might be millions. They might have position ahead of you or higher than you. But when God is with you, no one. The whole, the whole nation of Israel that we are talking about, when I did the study and research, when I look at it, their population, as, as at about, let's say, five years ago, was ordinary 8.5 million. Ordinary 8.5 million. Not even half of London. Hello. Yes. Go into your research and check it very well. The nation that we are talking about, they are not eight. They are they are not ten million. At least London is at the last census was sixteen million. Only London. I'm not talking of United Kingdom. United Kingdom was the the last one I checked was about sixty three million. And look at Nigeria. Nigeria the last time. I check, maybe it's more than, don't quote me. I think I read something about 180 million. Look at India, that one, they are overpopulated. But the impact, when God is with you, who can be against you? 8.5 million, oh, let me now wow you. You know, among the 8.5 8 .8 million, 2.5 millions are Arabs. <laughs> that is, uh, they are not real, they are not, they are not complete Israel, they are Arab Israel, the 2.5 of them, and they are making impact all over the world. So if God is with you, who can be against you? Nobody, nobody. God said that he is not in, he's not interested in destroying his own, according to the book of um, Ephesians, I mean, according to the book of Second Peter chapter 3, from verse 8 to verse 9, he is not in the process or in the mindset of destroying his own. Rather, he is giving us the opportunity of repentance. Okay, let us see what repentance does for the children of Israel. You know, most of the time, when they revolt against God, they will take God will deliver them into the hands of their enemy. But when they come back to their senses, God will take them away. And he will punish those that he was using to punish his people. He will, oh my God, he will destroy them totally. But he was the one using those people to torment his one. So brethren, do you want to remain tormented or you want to be set free? That is my question to you today. The purpose of this time preaching is that it liberates us. It gives us the 
it gives us the mindset. Are you getting me now? It gives us the mindset to be able to redeem our time such that we, we will not be fooled anymore. Are you getting me now? That we will not be fooled anymore. And whatever we do will be according to God precept. You and I, we need to seek after the goodness of God. The time we have, let us use it to look what to search for God. According to the book of Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 33, it said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When we seek God and his righteousness, everything that we are looking for, when you are seeking, when you are, you are seeking God, yeah? Say, seek first the kingdom of God. For you to seek God, the kingdom, to seek first the kingdom of God, you have to learn, you have to start by repentance, learning everything that God does not want you to do and trying to come into the orderliness that God has, then you are seeking the kingdom. And when you seek the kingdom, you are seeking it righteously. You are not just seeking by saying, I'm seeking it. No, you are not seeking the kingdom, but you seek the kingdom with your righteousness. And what are the righteousness? Your righteousness is to follow the precept of God. Love God. If you love God, you will follow his rules and commandments. You will want to make him happy. You want to, you would want him to turn his face towards you for anyone. Many people are praying and miss only because God is not in what they are doing. What is in you thinking that you are praying and you are praying to a rock and you believe that God is there because God said to Moses, struck the the rock and the water will come. And then you now find rock in where you are in your area. You now camp people inside a, inside a, um, 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 a cave and you are holding the rock and you are praying. For what reason is that? Don't you know that you, are, you have erected another idol? You are provoking God to jealousy. You have destroyed the life of those people that you took to that place. You have totally destroyed the plan of God in their life because they are sowing allegiance unto that thing. God said, I do not show myself to you. He said, Moses, look, look at it now in the book of Exodus. He said, Moses, look at it now. I do not show myself to you. So therefore, do not tell the children of Israel, I do not show myself to you. Do not create any image in place of me or in resemblance of me, because you have not seen me. So why are you bowing down or erecting things that God said that we should not do? You are misleading the children of God. The time, you are cutting their time short in a way, because God is a God of time. Hello? Our God is what? Our God is a God of time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God fixed his own, he fixed time for himself. He said, he said in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 7, he said, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or season that the father has fixed by his own authority. You have no control over it. Time Man does not have control over it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, let us not grow weary. Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap. In due season, you cannot decide to change to good and not reap goodness. Likewise, those that decide to change to bad, that they will not reap bad things. Oh, they will reap it. The judgment time is always come, is coming. But do not give up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do not what? Do not give up. I, I was talking about people that are sitting and 
they are sitting in their homes and they are using and finding excuses not to work or not to engage themselves in something that is going to profitable. Time. They forgot about time. They forgot that they are wasting the time. And time does not wait for anybody. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, from verse 6, it said that, go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief or officers or rulers, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Hello? Hello? Even the ants, God is directing us to the ants such that we will know how to plan our life. That is, those that are wasting time. They, are, they think that they have the whole, they, they have the whole time to themselves. No, sir, no, ma. You do not have the whole time for yourself. Whatever you want to do, please remember, you are within time which does not wait for anybody. And for those that are so lazy, that are thinking, or these our children that are out there, that they believe that, oh, everything is going to work out fine. But they forgot that by the time they, that there's, there's, a, there's a thing that we normally say to, or we've seen that some people, they will just come to realization and then they want to make a change. And when they realize that they, there's no more, there's no time for them. To, because what you can do when you are 20 years old, you cannot do it when you are in 60 years old. It's not possible. It's just like a footballer now. The footballer that is their peak time, the footballer's peak time is when they are from age 16. And the maximum they can go in, as a matter of fact, it is a phenomenon when some people go up to age 40 and still be active in, 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 in a professional football. No, only some few people like, like Manchester United guy in those days and Ronaldo, all their age 30. The, the, the contract of many football club, once they turn 30, they start watching the kind of contract they give them. They don't give them lengthy time, like five years contract. When someone turns to 32, they're already looking at packing that person aside. Hello, when somebody is just 32, they are already packing the person aside because why? What they can do within the age of 16 to 20, from 20 to let's say 28, they can't do it when they get to age 30. Hardly would you see anyone that called himself a football professional that will be so active when they when they got to age, age 30, 35. No. Why? What happened? the time, <laughs> time, and there is a season for everything. We read it in the book of Ecclesiastes that there is the way God created the world, he placed time in every area, but we try to ignore that. We thought we have the whole time and God now told us and sent us to the ant. He said, look at how the ant in the book of in the book of Proverbs chapter six, he said, go to the ants, oh slogan, that is, who are the slogan? Those that we are talking about now that believe that they have time, they can do, they can just be wasting that, wasting that, sleeping and be waking up. Some people are giving you help and you think that that help is going to continue all the time. No, it will come to a day that the person will say that, oh, this one is not serious. Let me move to someone that's serious. Let me help those that, that are serious. No matter who they are. Are you getting me now? Say, go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. You understand? Consider her ways and be wise. Because even the ants, they, they are conscious of time. Hello? The, the ants, the tiny ants, they understand the principle of time. 
how do they understand the, the principle of time? Look at it now. He said, without having a chief, you have the president, you have governor, you have um, um, a chairman, you have um, a councillor, but the ants, they don't have all those things. They don't have, they don't, they don't have, that, that, that is, without having chief, without having any officers, or without having rulers, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest, such that when the winter comes, they will have much enough in stock to feed themselves, to survive that winter period, the cold period. You won't see ants outside. It is only summertime. When they come out, they are only coming out there to, to stock their food. Praise the Lord. Let us use that as an example to wisen up. Praise the Lord. So, brethren, let us understand that God wants us to be perfect in everything that we do. Moving in accordance of time. Moving in what? In conjunction with time, that time does not wait for anyone. That's why we always pray that God, redeem our time for me. Rescue me. My time is in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my, from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. It is time they use to cajole people, to lock some people down. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And that is why Psalmist said in the book of in the book of Psalm, Psalm 90, from verse 12, it says that so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Teach us. David realizes that he was weak in identifying that there is a time constraint in everything that he does. He quickly prayed towards God. He said, God Almighty, say, teach me to number my days that I may get heart of wisdom. What do you need the heart of wisdom to To organize your time, to know when to do things and to do them quickly. Time does not wait for anybody. If you, if you allow time to bring, I pray that God will not allow time to bring you down. Example that I want to, that I wanted to cite out in the book of 4 Samuel chapter 7, and uh, 4 Samuel chapter 7. During this, I will just summarize it. During this period, that was when the ark of God was not in the possession of the children of, of God. Praise the Lord. As a result of them trespassing to God, what were they doing this period? And it was the period of prophet Samuel. What were they doing? If you read from, if you read from, if you read from chapter five, the story, you read the story from chapter five, when the Philistines, they attack them and they capture the ark of God. As a matter of fact, you can read from chapter four up to chapter seven. You will realize that it took them 20 years, 20 good years, 20 wasted years that they were in agony. They did not know, they did not have any success in everything. Why? Look at what they were doing. This, these are the things that they were worshiping. I'm just summarizing it now because there is a lot. Praise the Lord. They were worshiping Ashdod. You understand? And they call this Ashdod one each of the golden tumors and rats. That is, they make them a gold, like they are worshiping a rat. And remember this one, 
this one they call Ashton, they are Egyptians God. Remember, the mentality of the Egyptians is still in their sense, just like the mentality of, of, of the, the life in Egypt, still in part of many people's life, and it's still worrying them. Rats are some of the gods that they are worshiping in, in Egypt. They worship, they worship cow, they worship sun, they worship the water, they worship the moon, they worship, they worship so many gods. But this timeline, they went back, they forgot about God, they went back to worship Ashdod, they wash the and also they 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 what they, they were worship, they were worshiping um um strength God in all the regions, both in Gaza and Ashkelon and Gat and Akron. They were worshiping, they were worshiping idols, and God delivered them into the hands of their en enemies, the Philistines. And we know the story anyway of how God used the Philistines to torment the Israelites. And it's up to today. They are still at their throat. They are they are like, but what they don't understand that God chose them as kingdom of God to himself. But because of their stiff naked, he also placed beside them a Philistines. Okay, what am I trying to say here? For every human being that is created, there is a Philistines beside you to checkmate you to come to the, to come to the limelight of God. Hello, what am I saying is that anytime you see that the hands of the enemy are more in your are more pronounced in your life, quickly know that you are doing something wrong. Hello. That is just the only way. You understand me now? So just to bring it into, into the nutshell now. Just to round up in conclusion, anytime you realize that there is something that is going on, that are no more, even both physical and spiritual, check yourself. Hello, check yourself. The best deliverance for you is not to be running after any pastor. These people, they don't run after anybody. They don't run after, they only go to their church they run after God. You understand me now? And they, 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 they beg for forgiveness and they repent. God gives us time to repent. It was 20 years that God gave these people before they could come to the realization that, oh, it could be what is happening. It was as a result of the act of the covenant, not in our possession again. And that is why they were being oppressed. I pray that God will not allow your enemy to triumph over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And time will not work against you. Time will work for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will grant you the grace to redeem your time. I said, God will teach you the way to numbers your time that every time you have, you'll be able to, you'll be able to appropriate them. You'll be able to know how to manage your time and to bring glory to the almighty God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Offering time.